it almost never comes as a surprise to people that chemists end up having lots of notations for things. Because often, to actually describe an entire chemical system is going to be just so unwieldy that we'd have to really spend a lot of time. Can you picture having to sketch this out every time you want to describe a silver cadmium battery? That would not be a very good time. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to have something we call the line notation for this. Now what we do is we go from anode to cathode. We'll start out right here where the wire begins. In other words, almost like the battery's terminal. And then we just work through everything. And we're going to use our notation to go from one side to the other and describe this cell. So when we do this, we're going to go ahead and write the very far side that we start at, which is typically going to be a wire. Often it will be a reacting wire, like cadmium, where the bar of cadmium does dissolve. But what if we have a reaction where it's never going to be a solid on this side of our half reaction? You know, what if it was this an aqueous ion? Well, we can always just stick a platinum wire in there to carry the current, at which point platinum would be our starting point for our notation. So we put PT solid. You'll see lots of these examples in the book. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a bar to communicate that there's been a phase change. We've gone from the solid metal object into some other form. Now, you see in my half reaction, I've got it as cadmium 2 plus. In this particular exact specific cell, I can be more specific by saying I have cadmium nitrate with cell notation. Be as specific as you can, because if you're being vague about it, that can still be a correct answer. You're just communicating, I don't really care what my counter ions are. And one thing we're going to find out soon is that the counter ion choice can actually have a pretty big impact on what the voltage will be uh, that we can give off by a battery. <clears throat> so we want to specify as much as we can. We even put our state of matter as aqueous right there. Now, just to highlight how much information can go here, we could even specify that it's a one molar solution if we wanted to. That's kind of optional. But all of the information about that salt goes between these two bars. We put up an upright bar every time that we're changing states of matter or changing phases. Now, the next thing that we do is we go through this porous glass filter into the salt bridge. So what we're going to communicate there is we're just going to have two bars. This double bar is just communicating that there's a salt bridge right there. We didn't specify what salts are in there because we shouldn't have to care. The only key thing is we want to make sure that there are ions that shouldn't be participating in the reaction or at least shouldn't be affecting your equilibrium if it matters. In this case, they chose to use nitrate ion. So we hope it's not going to interfere with our equilibrium. But either way, if we actually are using it, well, then we are. Over here, you'll see we're using potassium ion, so we don't have to worry about much from that. Now we're going to do the cathodic, uh, cathodic side of our battery. So we come through the other plate. That was this bar. Now we encounter this solution. Now we've got our silver nitrate, which is aqueous. And we could put in extra information about it if we had something to be specific about. Let's just pretend that this is a one molar solution as well, just so we have a little bit of symmetry. We have a phase transition going from solution to solid. I'm going to have my silver wire there. Now we can presume that to make sure we don't have to spend as much money on a bar of silver, we probably have a little silver section, and then we probably have just some insulated wire connecting it that doesn't do anything for the chemistry. We don't have to specify that in our line notation. We don't have to talk about the connecting wire. We don't have to talk about the model of the voltmeter that's up here. We're basically just going from the terminal to terminal. So it's basically like you're describing what's inside of the battery. So that's how we use our line notation.